Um, when you when people look at sort of Australia and Asia now, I think there's a sense that they haven't fallen as far, and certainly with us with Australia that there's you know there's been continued growth and they haven't slid into a recession. Um, do you think that that focuses people's attention a bit more on some of the other markets that maybe they've they've not paid as as much attention to previously? Do you mean uh, would would bring more attention to Asia mm -hmm. and to Australia? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that from uh, from foreign investor standpoint, uh, they should be very impressed, particularly with Australia and its ability to you know to be resilient through not only this last cycle, but uh, you know probably five cycles in the in the 19 years of uninterrupted growth. Uh, you've had SARS, you've had 9/11, you had the Asian currency crisis in the in the late 90s. Um, so Australia has proved to be very very resilient. Uh, and I think that should have uh, really to the benefit of Australia. <laughs> and, and you're seeing that uh, in particular, in, as well in Asia, a lot of capital, a lot of firms, uh, really the lion's share of activity, I think, globally taking place in Asia now. But I suspect that in the market there is a lot of pent up potential. Uh, things that people have been working on uh, and staying busy. Uh, they've got a lot of ideas, and I think you're going to start to see more and more of those transactions take place. But I don't think it's going to be, um, you know, a quantum shift, uh, and I don't think it's going to be back to, you know, the, the level of volumes that you would have seen three three years ago. I think that will continue to improve. Uh, you know, there'll be hiccups along the way. Is if you look at, at prior cycles, there'll be false starts. <laughs> uh, I think there may be some other shoes to drop uh, that could affect the broader markets. Uh, you know, we're seeing in our operating companies generally, and I think you see this in the in the public companies too, more visibility of earnings, uh, and uh, a certain level of debt back and available, and that enables transactions to take place when uh, you had very little confidence in future earnings, and almost no debt. Uh, it was very hard to do anything. <laughs> Um, do you think that people are too focused on, on the recovery right now? And if there were to be another blip on the radar, that it might really throw things off again? Uh, perhaps. I don't know. It might have a bigger impact in Australia and Asia, where I think there is a view that uh, they're completely out of the woods. Um, you know, I remember being here in Australia a year ago, uh, the, almost the bottom of the market the first week of, uh, of March. And similarly, uh, being uh, at, at your conference in Hong Kong a year ago in December, uh, where there was uh, a sense of shock that uh, uh, the, uh, Asia was not decoupled uh, and that it too could be subject uh, to some ups and downs. It does seem like this part of the world, uh, the view is that uh, they've gotten through it very well and it's over. Uh, again, I think if, if history is a, is, is a good teacher, it's never over. <laughs> and in the US, it's really just starting. So uh, yeah, it would be a big uh, uh, wrench in the works to have another uh, crisis. Um, but I don't think it'll destroy uh, you know, some of the activity we're seeing.